On behalf of the University of Houston Clear Lake, I welcome you to the 2019 North American Prairie Conference. Our Hawk community is excited to be your host and hope that you gain in knowledge and even greater appreciation of the value of prairies to the health of our environment. Most importantly, I hope that you are able to expand your personal and professional networks for supportive prairies as you learn new strategies for protecting and restoring the prairie landscape of this country. Wherever, however, and whenever possible. Most of you do not know, but I arrived in fall 2017, 25 days before Hurricane Harvey from Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, the university and its educational location suffered minimal damages, and my home was completely spared. However, during that time, I watched as the water in my street rose and receded, rose and receded multiple times. My surroundings were largely asphalt, concrete, and buildings. The water had virtually no place to go, and that was only into the sewers. I saw videos and photos of flooded homes and businesses around the area, and I know that there are still businesses, individuals, and families that have not fully recovered. This means that as a region, we have not recovered our health, and I wonder what can we do and how can we have an impact? And then Georges Guillon, Executive Director of the Environmental Institute of Houston, Wendy Nicely, Nicely, which is Ricely, right? Wendy, okay. A coordinator of the environmental education programs in the Environmental Institute of Houston, and Beth Robertson of the Prairie Conservation came to my office to meet with the provost, Provost Stephen Berberich. Where are you, Stephen? There he is. Okay. They came in to discuss possibly hosting this conference here. So uh, the provost and I agreed, wonderful opportunity. Okay, so that brings us to today. Now, because you're all here today, I had to do one of my favorite things before I had remarks, and that was to Google to learn what is a prairie. <laughs> like, after all, we're an institution committed to lifelong learning, right? We're higher ed. So briefly, I learned the definition of a prairie as an ecological community dominated by grasses and forbs that had less than one tree per acre. I also learned that the tough prairie sod is a great conserver of soil and water that it acts like a sponge. It catches and holds the rainwater. And consequently, as a result, there's um, less water runoff than there was in terms of what I experienced and many people did here. Also that the, the roots bind very tightly uh, in the soil and they protect against erosion. I also learned that prairie sod is so dense that settlers used it like bricks to build houses. And as I said to Cassidy and a couple of others earlier, I learned that one square yard just of soil, prairie soil, four inches deep, contains enough roots when put end to end to stretch 20 miles. I, incredible. Then I had to Google Forb. What is a Forb? <laughs> Gosh. So, I learned that it's a herbaceous flowering plant exclusive of grasses and sedges, and at least some of them are nutritive and or have medicinal value. So then I needed to Google some examples of water forbs, okay, and also learned that they can be incredibly beautiful. I discovered clover, milkweed, and sunflowers, which I absolutely love. Specifically, the purple coneflower, or echinacea. 
That's a member of the sunflower and daisy family, for those of you who don't know. Okay. <laughs> Importantly, it was used by Native Americans to treat anything from colds to snake bites. And then in the laboratory, it's been shown to have anesthetic, anti-inflammatory, and antibiotic properties. And it also increases the resistance of cells to cultures, I'm sorry, to viruses. So then after that, my brief Google search, what I needed to do then was to say, well, what is the conference about? What are you going to be hearing about? What are you going to be talking about? So I looked at the conference program and learned that there are many different types of prairies. There are prairie strips, there are urban prairies, there are pocket prairies, there are flatline prairies, and I did look up the definition, so I'm not just saying those, those uh, adjectives. But in other words, what I learned was that there are many different ways to protect and restore elements of the prairie landscape of this country, and that you are here today to share some of those many different ways to help us all discover the whenevers, the wherevers, and the howevers that are possible. My big takeaway is that I learned how important this conference is, and I'm so appreciative of UH Clear Lake's role. I want to express gratitude to the conference sponsors and to all who worked toward making this conference happen. I'm going to end with a quote from one of your speakers. You're going to hear him, which I now understand its meaning better. Dr. John Jacob, professor and extension specialist for the Texas AgriLife Extension Service of Texas A&M University said, in the end, it is all about health. The quest for a healthy place transcends all silos. We need to take a bigger view of how healthy prairies contribute to the health of the city and vice versa. I hope that you learn more strategies, build your network, uh, come away from this conference more hopeful about what we can do together to improve the health of our environment. Thank you. <laughs>